Hey, how's it going, everyone? Thank you for joining me on a new episode of the Music Review Podcast. My name is Josh, and today I have a new album review for you guys. Um, it's going to be um, the first of uh, a genre that I'm covering on this uh, podcast, and uh, the genre is country. Um, the artist is Margot Price. In episode 16, That's How Rumors Get Started, is the name of the album. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Um, and before I get started, I just wanted to let everyone know uh, the most recent um, podcast uh, that I put out was Best and Worst Track of the Week of July 18th. That one was a bit of an interesting one due to the fact that it was mainly a album bomb. Um, my first album bomb on that series from Pop Smoke's posthumous album. Um basically a re- a light review of that album so if you're interested in pop smokes music um or a review that i did on it go ahead and check that episode out there are two other artists that are covered on that best orange track of the week but mainly it is a pop smoke album review so yeah we will get started on the margot price review and uh yeah let's get to it so for those of you that are not familiar with uh, margot price um don't fret Margot Price is a country singer-songwriter based out of Nashville, originally from Illinois. Um, She is of the alternative slash maybe outlaw country scene, meaning she is not mainstream country and her music does not uh, sound of contemporary radio-friendly country either. Um, And uh, there's more to it. especially with this album here. Um, Basically, she had her debut album released in 2016. Um, She had critical acclaim as going as far as uh, publications such as Fader Fader, calling her country's next star. Uh, In 2018, she was even nominated for a Grammy for the category of Best New Artist. Um, Her last album was actually released in 2017, All American Made. Um, I did listen to um, some of this uh, album or actually all of it um but I, I briefly just kind of skimmed through it uh this album seemed to have like a charm and authentic nature to it it did heavily lean on a country sound mainly of a uh, kind of classic country if you will um with also uh, a lot of political commentary thrown in um obviously left leaning so not typical of a country artist to be on that side uh, and unbashfully so, like it was pretty on the nose. Um, and, and from what I, from what I'm getting from the the previous album, and to that's how rumors get started, which was released not too long ago um, on July 10th. Um, it seems that she had a bit of a evolution or some sort of change where she kind of didn't really uh, release much of a country album with this new um, album. That's how rumors get started. All American Made uh, was an album that um, had certain, I guess, authenticity to it, some charm um, to where I saw uh, things like her uh, singing about what it's like to grow up on a farm or even a cover with Willie uh, uh, Willie Nelson, which of... uh, is not a light thing to put on an album. Willie Nelson is regarded as a country legend. So um, that's, that's pretty impressive in itself. Now um, <clears throat> going into this uh, album, I honestly have not listened to much of Marco Price's music. I listen to some tracks here and there. Um, really. I just heard the name buzz here and there as I'm like an avid follower of uh, just music in general. Um, I did go into this thinking, hey, it's probably going to be an alternative country album um, that's that displays maybe virtuosic vocal talent, um, more charm, stuff like that. Um, this new album was also produced by Sergio Simpson, another uh, huge name in alternative country. Um, now, overall, this album... I'd say it's more of a Americana or um, I, maybe not even a country album. Um, there's some elements that you'd find in country music, but uh, I'd say it's definitely more of a maybe 
adult contemporary or Americana album. And Americana is kind of an interesting thing to talk about because it is generally so broad. Um, it's not really something that you can pinpoint to an exact scene, but it's definitely a phenomenon that has occurred throughout the history of the United States uh, since the invention of like rock music. Um, you've had names all over the place, like Bruce Springsteen, um, the Civil Wars, the Lumineers, stuff that's generally re- that might be regarded as folk can generally be associated with the Americana flavor. Um, and that's basically what I've got in most of this album. Um, now, to start from the get-go, the title track, uh, that's how rumors get started. Uh, automatically features a bright keyboard tone. The vocals are generally there at the forefront. You can definitely see that that's supposed to be the star of the show. Uh, there's some light acoustic guitar in there. The, the vocals are reverb, soaked in reverb. Some super light percussion, almost auxiliary percussion-like. It doesn't really sound like a trap set. Um, and it seems to be trying to f- appeal to some old-fashioned aesthetic. The album doesn't really captivate me until the song, the second song, Letting Me Down. It's more faster paced. Um, I like that organ that kind of supports everything that's buried in the track. Uh, It has a good transition from the verse to the chorus. Some nice accented parts. Um, The supporting, I would say the supporting vocals by this male that's in there are a little bit distracting. I'd say that uh, it's a little untasteful. If you have a vocalist like Margot Price, you should probably have that more at the forefront. Um, but that doesn't happen too often on this album. Uh, and yes, it's an Americana rock type track. It doesn't feel like her previous album at all. Um, it It's very much so not very country. Uh, the next track was one of my favorites, Twinkle Twinkle. You have uh, this guitar riff that just comes in very... Uh, very energetic, uh, like Gary Collard Jr. or Black Keys type thing. It has this dirty tone, lots of character. Um, it, it features some interesting vocals effects thrown in and out the track that kind of accents the vocals. Um, there's a rough texture to this track, and that kind of that kind of coincides with, I think, the message of the song as well. Uh, It's uh, generally a cool song on here. Um, Stone Me was a little bit of a lull. Um, It has this pretty introduction. There's some really live production going on. Um, And then again, there's like this soft auxiliary type percussion going on. Um, um, Song-wise, maybe it's a song about being hidden or something like that. Um, But uh, it has a bit of a melancholy to it. It kind of reminds me of some Kurt Vile tracks, like an in instrumentation. Uh, the tr- track overall does kind of like remain flat. It doesn't captivate me as much as maybe Twinkle Twinkle. Um, and it doesn't develop much either. And that's kind of like an overall theme. A lot of the tracks on this song are kind of just you get what you get in like the first 30 seconds of the track. There's not much development on some of the things that I, I, I thought needed to that didn't captivate me as much. Um, the next track um, is kind of another low point for me too. Um, hey Child. Um, it has like this accompanying bass tone and this nice bass line to it. Some lovely guitar embellishments. Um, it features um, the use of a gospel choir in these big vocal moments. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of just it kind of just made me like look back to the song Hey Jude by the Beatles because the name of the song is Hey Child and the the chorus utilizes that over and over again. And it kind of goes for that grandiose moment that Hey Jude does. Um, but the vocals all in all are consistent of being like from this old country style. I think maybe Dolly, Dolly Parton-esque. Um, it just has this big ending that just repeats the chorus over and over again. I guess I felt like it was like a cheap um, pander to uh, it used cheap pandering to like Beatles fans or something like that. Um, I did like the next track, Heartless Mine. 
Um, this one had like a new wave eighties kind of flavor to it. Uh, it has like this fat baseline. It's definitely more poppy. Um, so yeah, it kind of, here's a good example of this album not being country at all. This no way jit form is country nor Americana. Um, this song does like have these nice eerie synth tones texturing the track. It's a beat. Uh, the chorus does fall a little flat at times. It doesn't really add more to the track. I really wish it would have been a little bit more hooky, especially since it was going for a pop flavor. Um, <clears throat> The big vocal parts that seem to be utilized fall a little bit short. Um, although it does have a really nice guitar solo, and it honestly like, kind of reminds me of Flock of Seagulls um, for some reason. Um, it's, it's a cool new wave type track. Um, it is a tad short. I wish it was a little bit longer. Um, the next two tracks aren't too interesting. They do kind of have some weird qualities I found in the album. Uh, the track What Happened to Our Love oddly reminds me of the last Arctic Monkeys album, uh, Tranquility Hotel and Casino. It has like this loungy like atmosphere and some of the melodic um, lines are kind of saying kind of the same way Alex Turner does in that album, especially with how it mixes with the exposed bass, piano and drums. It was just an odd uh, texture to see in this album. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't terrible though. It, I'm not trying to say that in a negative way. Um, Gone to Stay. Um, unfortunately, this track just kind of struck me as filler. It's a little underwhelming. It doesn't necessarily want me to make me want to turn off the song, but it also doesn't really get me excited or wanting to dance or even turn the volume up. Um, and then the album, we kind of get to the end of the album. Um, there's another track in between the end track, I Die For You, Prisoner of the Highway. It's just a, cl Prison, uh, Prisoner of the Highway is just a classic I'm on the road a lot type thing. Um, I'd say maybe, uh, I Die For You, the closing track was somewhat of a highlight. It's definitely different from the rest of the tracks. It has this nice guitar use, uh, guitar tone that's used to accompany her vo vocals, um, super reverby on the vocals again. It's a good vocal performance, though. Again, it uses this auxiliary percussion. The song does try to build up and develop. A lot of voices are added. The chorus aims to be really big. Um, there's this weird whaley effect used to embellish the track, like a slide guitar that kind of does this cool thing to the track. Uh, but overall, uh, yeah, that wasn't really one of my favorite songs either. And it's a bit of a short album. It's only around 30 minutes so uh yeah the overall i thought the album was okay um definitely enjoyed her previous album a little bit more but overall you give this like a five out of ten um i really wish some things were more developed or if the compositions were just more uh dead set on a certain sound um or energy because a lot of it just falls flat um for instance, I like the Twinkle Twinkle uh, song a lot because of the guitar riffs, but that literally doesn't show up ever again on the album. Um, another example would be um, Heartless Mind. I love that pop New Wave flavor, but again, it doesn't appear ever again. Um, I feel like this is a bit of a mixed bag of tracks. Uh, if you're interested in Margot Price or alternative country in general, uh, or even Americana, I'd say give this album a shot. Um, if you're list looking for something that has pure country aesthetic, this is not going to be for you, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, um, I feel like there's more up the pat or up the road for Margot Price. Um, maybe this was just a maybe an album that was more of experimentation. Um, I think she can do a lot better job with something more focused. Um, but yeah, uh, if you made it to the end of the episode, thanks for listening. Uh, I'm Josh, uh, the music reviewer, and uh, take care of yourselves. I will be reviewing more music soon.